Hey everyone, this is Red Eyes Matt Pace in Chicago. I am on the phone with Cheap Thrills star Sarah Paxton. How's it going, Sarah? Hey, it's going really well. How about you? Good, thanks. Where are you talking to me from? Um, I'm in Los Angeles. I actually just got out in the audition. So, uh, um, you know, working, doing my thing. How did the audition go? I, I assume you cannot say what it was for. Uh, no, I mean, I, it was for a, a thriller horror movie, uh, and uh, and it was it's a, it's a good script. I um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say what it is, especially since I'm not in it. <laughs> I thought Cheap Thrills was crazy and fascinating and and really entertaining. And, you know, in the movie, of course, you and, and David Koechner's character offer Pat Healy and Ethan Embry these unusual challenges and ways to make money. Do you think it's more twisted to present this kind of game or to take advantage of it? I definitely think it's more twisted to present this kind of game, especially when, you're, you know, you're the one with a bunch of money and you're, you know, Give a shit, and you're doing it for pure, you know, entertainment purposes. At least from Pat and Ethan's point of view, they desperately, desperately need the money. And I mean, we've all, you know, I'm sure we've all had those kinds of thoughts. Reading the script that really put me in that place where I was like, wow, what would I do? If I had a child and I was to be evicted and I was fired, I don't know what I'd do. I mean, when a person is waiting that I'm not money in your face. I mean, they're taking advantage of how desperate they are. But I think that's more fucked up. Do you think, obviously you're right, you know, in this movie the characters are desperate for money and that's with their back against the wall. They have to make those choices. Do you think there's sort of a, an interesting level of, of people wanting to challenge themselves also? I, I kind of was imagining, you know, if characters didn't need the money but this opportunity came along, they might be like, you know, let's, let's play along. This sounds kind of interesting. So is it fair to assume? Is it fair to assume you never watched like Fear Factor or anything like that? Oh God, no! I can't do it. I can't do it. That then you'd rather be? Uh, would you rather be like have to lay in a box of cockroaches than have to eat one then? I I couldn't do any of it. Anything involving a roach, I don't think I I can't even look at one. I can't, if I see one on the street, I freak out and I jump like twenty feet in the air and become. <laughs> why why is that the one thing that that does that to you? I don't know. It's, it's a totally irrational fear. It's not like they can hurt you or anything. I, I know it's weird, but it's just this weird this weird phobia I've had my entire life. Like I'm not gonna do it. 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 I'm on your face as you were observing. Did you ever, you know, as you were preparing, did you ever look in the mirror to see how disturbing your expressions were, that, that notion of sort of blankness and, and fascination with people doing these terrible things? No, I never saw it just in the mirror. I think that it's going to sound so corny and like actory, I guess, but I think that I was, I was so scared to play this role that I spent more time on trying to figure out why she is that creepy and fucked up. Like I was trying to like get inside of her head and, and then not worry about so much what like the outcome of my facial expression would be. I was just trying to like, kind of understand her because she's so horrible and such a like unfeeling sex 
psychopath. I was just like really trying to figure her out and get inside of her head. And so I guess that those evil expressions just sort of came on my face. Um, but I was really worried about it. I was really, I was really terrified. I Pat, you know, Pat and I go way back and we're, we're friends. So Pat was one that called me and was like, you should do this. I think this could be really great. And that sort of gave me the courage to take the leap. But it was very scary. It's scary playing somebody so awful. So did it surprise you then the first time you saw the film and you saw that the the sort of chilling looks that come across your face? Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard for me to, I don't like, no, no one likes watching themselves, obviously. And and I'm, and I'm, I think that every person is their harshest critic, you know what I mean? So I didn't watch it and I was like, oh, thank God, it's really great. I thought, but it makes me feel really good whenever somebody tells me that it was really creepy or chilling or so that, that makes me feel good, like I accomplished my, you know, set out to accomplish. Do you think it's it's scarier to encounter someone who's sort of loud and disturbed or more quiet and unsettling the way that Violet is? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, I definitely, I personally think that Violet is the creepiest person in the movie because at first you think you know who she is and you're watching the movie and you're like, oh, she's just this young on trophy wife who's texting on your phone. I mean, I live in Los Angeles, so that is everywhere. You know what I mean? It wasn't hard to, like, portray that. I see it all the time. And then as the story goes on, it, like, slowly dawns on you. You're like, this girl is fucked. Like, like, her, like you said, her expressions. And then for me, I feel like the real moment is when she's, she's like, fixing up Craig's face. And she's, like, talking about how when she was a little girl, she saw a skateboarder break all his bones. And she had I read that you sort of had it to cleanse yourself after this movie <laughs> just sort of felt a little dirty based on what happens in the film. You've, you've done some other pretty disturbing work. Have you? Did you ever have that feeling after filming before, or, or was this the first time that it really stuck with you that way? This was the first time that before, during, and after I felt close. Like, I think that's why it was so easy. Not easy, but I think that's why it was doable to actually, like, like feel that feeling somehow, like that dead inside feeling, because uh, because the writer did such a good job of, like, making you feel that feeling while you're reading it. Like, I, that's why I read it. I was like, I don't take a shower. I don't feel right. I'm like, oh, it's humanity. Oh, well, fuck. And then during it, because it was such a quick shoot, and we couldn't really, there wasn't a lot of, like, time to joke around and, like, let off the steam, really. Or, like, other movies that I did, like, uh, I did a movie called The Last House on the Left, and we all lived in the same hotel, and we would go out and get drinks after work together. But that was a three-month-long shoot, so if it's it, there was just no time. But it's kind of stuck with you. You go home and, like, feel nasty. And after we finished, I, yeah, I definitely had to, like, not think about it for a while. It just kind of made me feel gross. Put put these items in order as far as which is the most and least scary to you. Sharks, sorority girls, mermaids, haunted hotels, home intruders, psychologically disturbed daredevils. Ty West kept like hiding 
seeing the ghost girl in different parts of the of the hotel to, like freak me out and I would like see my pants every time. Um, second, I have to say the Lordy Girls. Third, I have to say what else was that? Oh, third, Psycho Mono or whatever that was. And then and then Mermaid Glass for sure because Mermaid was too fun. <laughs> uh, I want to give you I want to give you some uh, options like uh, as far as uh, challenges that you would consider tell me which one you would rather do would okay. you would you rather go bungee jumping or wrestle an alligator oh my god oh my god oh god oh god uh, I'm gonna say go I'll say a, a alligator farm. I think I'd rather wrestle an alligator. How about eat a pigeon, eat a pigeon, or lick a subway train pole? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh god! Oh god! Is the pigeon cooked? Partially. Yeah, just just for a second, not like for a half hour. I think I'd rather lick the pole. Is that is that fucked up? No, I there's really no right or wrong answer in these situations. Yeah, you're right. How about shave your head for a year or get a tiny cute tattoo on your face? You said that while watching Cheap Thrills, you felt disgusted, but you were also laughing. What's something else gross that you find funny? I don't know. Sports? I don't know. Poop? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sports? I don't know. What else is gross but funny? I'm not very easily disgusted, to tell you the truth. Like, I, I mean, obviously, looking at subway pole, that's fucking gross to anybody. But... Like, I don't really care if people, like, burp and fart and, like, do stuff. I, it doesn't gross me out. I don't care about talking about it. I can even talk about it while eating food. I just don't care. Um, my friends and I sometimes like to fart on purpose in public situations when we shouldn't be party. I was thrown out of a yoga class once because, okay, when I was in high school, I hated PE. I was really bad at sports. So you could go to a community college, take a yoga class, and have that, like, the tra- the credit to be transferable or whatever, so it would count. So I did this with, like, half of my class. And in the middle of class, I'm upside down, like, my legs over my head, like, behind me, and we're all doing this. And I look at my friend, and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to fart right now. And she was like, no, no, do it. It's so quiet. I'm like, no, no, no. I, I, I'm going to do it. I think it'd be really funny. And she was like, no, and then I did it. It was so loud, and everyone started dying laughing, and the teacher kicked me out and failed me right there and then. Wow. I'm I'm like, oh. it's, it's, I was it's it. It's just natural. You, can't, you shouldn't be uh, failed for that. I guess it's because it caused the ruckus in class. But still, what if I had done it on purpose? She didn't know I did it on purpose. <laughs> would you rather would you rather have I'm sorry say that one more time I said so basically with me everything that is gross is funny except for bar thing I can't do bar can't do it <laughs> Sarah would you rather have a legendary night that's somewhat good somewhat terrible or a forgettable average one Legendary could mean that I there was no line at pink hot dogs and a high chili dog with no line. Um, 
fine. And I'm like, it's not even legendary. Like, whoa. But, you know, I'm pretty easy. So it couldn't be that terrible. Legendary. Uh, I'll give you a couple options. Please feel free to take advantage of which either one you like. Can you either tell me a joke, rap part of a song that you know the words to, or sing part of your favorite TV theme song? Uh, I'll sing part of my favorite TV show theme song. Okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. That was fan. That was fantastic. Uh, before we go, I have to ask. I know for a while you you were working on some music, maybe not as much anymore. Do you think? Do you think we'll ever get an official Sarah Paxton album? Cool. Thank you so much for your time, Sarah. I really appreciate it.